Time once again to check on the latest earnings trends with Zach's Director of Equity Research, Dirk Van Dyke. So here we sit at the beginning of another quarter, uh, one that is, uh, uh, by all outward appearances, shaping up to be one of the worst quarters for corporate profits in recent memory. We might as well get right to the bad news first. How bad do you think fourth quarter numbers are going to be? Uh, I think it's, it's going to be pretty bad. Right now, if you combine uh, the companies that have already reported, there are 26 of them as of this writing. It, it doesn't include Alcoa, which came in rather disappointing mm -hmm. uh, last night. Uh, with the, the remaining uh, stocks that, that haven't reported, where the analysts are looking for a 16.3% drop in uh, total net income. That, that's pretty ugly, and uh, given the, the trend in the, the estimates, we've been seeing a lot of, of cuts. Uh, I suspect it, it's likely to be even worse than that, although there is a, a, a distinct tendency for companies to report, more companies report better than expected than worse than expected uh, earnings, so maybe we'll end up around this minus 16 uh, level, but it's, uh, it's going to be an ugly quarter. All right, and uh, if you're keeping track of the calendar, we are taping this on the 13th of January, so the last night uh, that Dirk refers to was the uh, the 12th, actually, the kickoff of this fourth quarter season. So, you know, the weakness sector-wise at one point in the beginning was just confined to the financials and consumer discretionary. Seems to be getting a little broader based it, now. It's extremely broad-based. Uh, I mean, really, when you uh, you look at the, you know, the revisions index, we sort of switched over from looking at uh, 08 and 09 to 09 and 2010 uh, this week, just kind of the way the, the database handles the, uh, the data. Uh, but you're seeing every sector has got more than three cuts for, for every increase. There's, there's really no place to hide. I mean, they, the more defensive sectors are holding up relatively better, you know, healthcare, consumer staples, right. uh, electric utilities. But what we're seeing in, in some of the other sectors, in technology, industrials, materials, uh, is, is simply horrific. I mean, you know, in, in some cases, uh, you know, we're talking better than a, a hundred cuts for, you know, against a single industry. Increase. Yeah, I mean, energy and technology had been some bright spots at one point. Now even they're beginning to turn. Yeah, down. well, I mean, energy certainly. If you went back six months ago, when energy prices were were still climbing uh, rapidly, were doing quite well. But you bring the the price of oil from 147 down to below 40, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to leave a mark, and we're definitely seeing it. They, well, although the one bright spot in energy could be coal. Uh, yeah, the coal tends to have longer uh, term contracts. Um, so the the stuff that was signed early last year was really going to kick in. It, it's sort of a slower moving process uh, in in coal, and and actually I, I think there there may be some pretty good opportunities uh, in that group. Uh, but suffice to say, anything economically yeah. sensitive. Yeah, probably... and, and there's not a lot of coal exposure in the S&P 500 as I, well. So, I see. Uh, and that it's, it's not moving the needle significantly. So consumer staples, again, one of the uh, pockets of strength. What are the numbers uh, looking like? Relative about? strength. Uh, I mean, you're, you're still uh, looking at, you know, close to, to four cuts for, for every uh, increase. But, you know, and, and the, the size of the declines in, in those, the healthcare and consumer staples, are not as big as these declines that we've been seeing elsewhere. I mean, over 20% of the companies in the S&P 500 have seen their 2009 estimates cut by 10% or more over the last month. Those are big, big cuts. And you're seeing this over and over again. I mean, it's not, I mean, we use a, a rolling four-week uh, average, the average, and yeah. it's, it's, this has been going on for a lot more than four weeks. Well, so. What do you think of a, uh, an expected increase of, for fourth quarter in uh, consumer staples of 5%? Uh, it, it's, it's doable. Yeah. Uh, um, actually, I mean, the, uh, the number that we have uh, for consumer staples is a little bit lower than that. It's 2.9%. Uh, 
um, on a, a combined basis. But, you know, I throw in a couple of positive surprises um, that that's doable on a, a total net income uh, basis. Actually, I mean, utilities look pretty strong. Financial. Yeah, another bright spot I'm, I'm reading. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, but it, it's, you know, you've had some increases there, but relatively small sample size in terms of number of revisions. I wouldn't draw too much into that, but they, that may be partly the flip side of what you've seen in the uh, decline in energy costs mm -hmm. that, you know, that, but electric rates haven't come down. So Now, I, I would expect that in future quarters there'd be that catching up on the on the downside. What about health care profits for 4Q up 6%? What do you think of that? Uh, yeah, we've actually got them labeled a little bit better than that, up 7.8%, uh, uh, but very much in that sort of uh, ballpark. Um, you know, again, that that's not really robust, you know, something to make your mouth salivate over. No. But anything positive in this environment Absolutely. Is, on a relative basis looks looks great. So looking out to 2009, uh, first quarter, second quarter, weak again, maybe a pickup in third quarter? Uh, well, I mean, there is implicitly, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of third quarter explicit estimates in the system. But if you look at uh, what people have got down for the first quarter, which is about a, a little bit over a 10% decline, uh, and compare that to what we have for the, the full year expectations for 09. Implicitly, there's a, an expected second half pickup. Mm -hmm. I really don't buy it. Uh, don't think we're going to start to see any easier comparisons by the end of the year? I, I think that the, look, the economy is going to be in a lot worse shape in 2009 than it was in 2008. Uh, you know, all that seizing up in the credit uh, in the credit markets that we saw in uh, October, right, and and into into November, that is just starting to be felt in the the real economy. And yeah, you know, you're going to have the, this cascading effect of higher unemployment leading to less demand. Uh, the stimulus package will help. I don't think it's necessarily big enough to really do the trick, but... And there's a lag time there before there, there's, kicking, Oh, too. there's a very big lag time in that, but I, I really am seeing that as, as almost like an airbag, right? The, the vehicle is still going to be really badly damaged, but at least it will allow the passengers to walk away relatively unscathed. Yeah, by the time that kicks in, the economy could turn around on its own, oh, conceivably, I, uh, yeah. no? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, conceivably Hamas and Israel could break out and sing Kumbaya Well, listen, tomorrow. I don't want to get, go down that road, but I'm just trying to keep it uh, to these, these numbers. I, I mean, but it, it, it doesn't seem highly likely to me. That's right. kind of what I'm saying. Do you have a fourth quarter target? Uh, fourth quarter target for... S&P 500? I, I think the... Decrease? Your I, I, I think that the, uh, the S&P 500 will probably... End this year uh, down, but not anywhere down as much as it was uh, in in 2008. Uh, Wait a minute, now that's your 09 target. Yeah, 09. Yeah, excuse okay. me. You have a, do you have a fourth quarter 08 target uh, for any kind of a decrease yet, or still too early? To um, well, it, it's too early. I mean, I'd, I'd go with that minus 16. That is the uh, the consensus of all the uh, the analysts. Uh, I'd say the risks are still much more to the downside particularly in the financials, which are going to expect it to be the major bastion of strength due to easy comparisons. But, you know, the, the rumblings, for example, we're getting out of Citigroup uh, are, are not that encouraging. Uh, you know, they're going to play some flaky accounting and write up Smith Barney by $10 billion. Yeah, that could hurt the financials. Uh, but, I mean, I, I think that's just to offset a whole bunch of uh, big losses that they'll take other wise. Uh, commercial real estate's turning down. The credit card, there's going to be a lot of problems in, in that book of business. Right. Uh, the there's going to be a lot of corporate not out problems. Of the woods yet. They're, they're not out of the woods yet, but given the really easy comps, they're expected to be the, the big gainers. 
Uh, okay, but we're going to have to leave it there for time. If you want to fill in the numbers in Dirk's scorecard or in any of the other tables that go with his text version of his earnings trends commentary, you can go to Zax.com if you haven't already, and you can link to it right off of our homepage. You scroll down the homepage and you click on the headline right next to Dirk's smiling face there. With Dirk Van Dyke, I'm Terry Ruffalo.